I've seen my stepmom in my dreams, sometimes hurting me. So since then, I stopped praying for her and her children, and I started praying fire on her instead. Now, Mrs. Amaka said, see, I was right. Now, Mrs. Amaka said, we should pray for those who hurt, who hurt us. I guess that's what the person is trying to say. How can I pray for someone that hates me so much and doesn't want to see me or my siblings prosper? And should I stop praying for the Holy Spirit to expose her? She isn't a nice person in real life too. Okay. Praise God. All right. So you saw her in your dream. In your dream, she was hurting you. In real life, she's not a nice person. Has she hurt you? Let's assume. Let's assume. Okay. What your primary concern here is, is to obey Christ. Um, Minister Nusa has obeyed Jesus. What does God say to you? To be at peace with all men. So I want you to go back. She's your stepmom, but you have a father who is also your high priest, who is also your advocate, who is also the commander of heaven's armies, who is also <laughs> your brag and your boast. Who pass? So you have no business fighting her. She's not your problem. Press into where focus on your focus. Your focus is Jesus. Focus there. Um, you say you, just so I answer the question because she's not a nice person in real life. Um, she said she doesn't want you to prosper. And she said she's she has, she stopped praying for them right. or he I don't know who sent this. the individual stopped, stopped praying, praying for, for them, them and right. started praying fire. fire. Yes. So should they should she should the pers should they stop praying for the Holy Spirit to for the Holy Spirit to expose her? Um, there's a book by Kenneth Hagin, if I remember well. Something about love is something to victory. The way to victory. The cover is red. My father used to have that book. Aha. Love is a weapon. <laughs> I will love you in obedience to Christ. And I will build up structures and systems that the enemy cannot pull down. And I will enact covenants with Jesus for my protection. <laughs> That's your business. Focus on your focus. Yeah, thank you. I think one... Yes. That's so powerful. I think one thing that stands out is the fact from this question is the fact that the person actually believes that the stepmom, if she's evil, can hurt you. Exactly. So you don't even have faith in God's protection. You, or maybe she has no, hurt no, them. No, I think, no, whether she has, see, you're not fighting a person. Mm. You're fighting a spirit. Right? So these spirits can project in your stepmother's face, but that's not who's doing you. And you are deploying your, sorry, my first degree is international relations, so just forgive this analogy. You are in war, right? But you are fighting the person that is not your enemy. You have already failed. Mm. You need to lean into on the first look. A lot of the conversations today have been about identity. First, first, how do you say to you, Daniel? Who are you? Who are you? See, I'm a child of God. I am seated far above. Okay. The Lord loves me. He covers me in his love. You want to come and collect me from the love. How will go be? You cannot. I am the apple of God's eye. So for you to get to me, you have to get to God. You have to open his eye. You have to collect me from his eye. Ha <laughs> I dare you. So that's what happens when... Because people were commenting on Amaka's video that, wow, I admire the way she loves God and all of that. That is what happens when you have a deep sense of identity and you understand who you really are. And that's what Minister Nusa has been talking about. We have to hurry, but I want us to take this question. Hi, I am so glad I came here today. Just last night, I was searching frantically for a therapist or anyone to talk to. 
I reached out to friends and, and boss, but no one saw... Hmm. Okay, but no one saw I needed help. People don't usually do because I seem to always be put together, a strong person. Sadly, I am not. I am deeply broken in every way. Then I stumbled on the flyer this morning on my... This morning. On my way here, out of the many events this morning, an unknown man slapped me. He said I stepped on him, but I wasn't on his path. I stood there speechless and I was crying. I then went on my way and I was thinking this is the similitude of what I pass through every single day. Life is slapping me from family, friends, job, everyone and everything I hold close. I don't know how to move on from here. I feel I am reaching my breaking point. Yeah, let's Uh, we, we said this at the beginning that if we had known if I had known early enough how to turn my eyes on Jesus and learn in the place of worship just through that pain immediately now um, offense when offense comes I process it faster, like, oh, this thing go, this is where it's going. Boom, I just throw it to Jesus. If I had known then when I was a small boy or when I had started pastoring and all the things were coming from left and right, in, in 2017, it was like the host of hell, the guard that they were passing, doing tag team. No tag team in wrestling where you go slap, the other person go enter. From accusation to financial issues to you know people were saying terrible things about me people who used to talk to me before they just turned their they just boned me you know so everything was happening at the same time i just i that's where i now learned okay let me this one don't pass me let me cry to god Stay with God. I'm telling you, it's not a religious thing. That is, that it will save you. That same thing you wrote down. Eh? You know, you don't need any, maybe, lingua, any Father, Lord God in Jesus' name. You can just talk like you are talking to your friend. And say, ah, God, this, you can pray and teach him if you want. You can talk to him. You can gist with him. He understands. And he will send help your way. He will send help your way. He will send something that will give you strength to go through. There's a song I wrote. Um, um, I, um, I will sail through the storm. I'll sail through the storm. Jesus is in my boat. Sail through the storm. I'll sail through the storm. Jesus is in my boat. Boat. So I have peace within. Jesus is in my boat. I have peace within. I'll, uh, then I said, I will, I will speak to the storm. Say to the storm, Jesus is in my boat. Peace be still. Then praise in the storm. Jesus is in my boat. I have victory. So you have to address who you are in Christ. Take your and another thing in Christianity, we battle the enemy by paying no attention to him by paying attention to the victor, the champion. That's how we win. We don't, we don't fight by looking at him. Oh, the storm is about to sink me. I'm about to drown. No, Jesus is with you. Focus on him and pour out your pain. He's, he, that Pour out your pain. Throw your pain. He's on the cross. Taking all that, soaking it. He's a sponge. Soaking everything that you have to there's nothing that you are going through that can take Jesus by surprise. You know? So, this is not to sermonize. This is not to sound religious, but now the thing will help me. Now they talk. So, you are going through all of that. Focus on Jesus. Go tell him. Say, Jesus, somebody slapped me. It doesn't make sense. Cry. And say, Lord, help me. If you don't, if there's nothing that, that works. My wife was in the, in, on the hospital bed about to die and people would have 
celebrated it and said, we said it. And all the scriptures I knew disappeared. But one, God, help me. That's all I prayed. And he showed me mercy. So. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have another question. It says, for the past 23 years of my life, I have been hurting. And sometimes whenever I want to do something great, I remember all the incidents because it still gets in my way. Sometimes I feel like I am doing too much by, doing too much by crying every day and talking to God about my emotions. And I feel I am being a burden to God that I am supposed to be, sorry, yes, that I am supposed to be talking about great things with God. I told God this morning how my life isn't worth living because, what living for? Because I have given up. How do I speak to God? Because I see him as my parents, because my parents never liked me and I never had a good relationship with them. I also see him as sir and like men. I also want I also feel once men speaks, once men speak, that's God speaking. Thank you. you. You have answered the question by yourself. I was going to say, ah, you are looking at men. That's why when you pray to him, you're looking at men. So there's something that happens, right? There are figures God put in our lives to stand in his place. There's the role of the pastor in church. But then it can never take the place of a father at home. A pastor in church, my pastor can never come and impact my children. He is not supposed to do it. He is not supposed to impact my children the way I should impact my children. Because God gave custody. He, he would tell Moses, talk to the Israelites, the fathers, to write down these things I have told them so that their children and their children's children will not depart from it. The model God used that he, 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 he picked, I said, I want to adopt this model to get the whole world, was Abraham. He said, I, I will pick this model because he will instruct his household after him. So there are people that God brought into our lives that look like him, that rep, sorry, that represent him, that it looks like, oh, these people when they, when they speak, God has spoken. Another set of people at the church are brethren in church. So most of the time when we get kicked out of the church, we superimpose it on God and say, for me to have been kicked out by people who pray a lot, or for me to have been treated this way by people who I look up to spiritually, they pray, this, I want to be like them. I want to be on the altar doing great things for God. I want to be in one department, scattering everywhere for Jesus. I want to be able to come up and share my testimony that, oh, you know, I preached and 500 people surrender to Christ. These are the people I look up to. Sometimes, because they are broken and they have not processed their brokenness, they hurt you by how they treat you. And because we've seen, looked up so much, like, wow, my father, oh, wow, my pastor, wow, sister, this, that is so flourish. She's such, you know, a shining light, you know? When they hurt us, we say, okay, this is how God sees us. So, um, when you talk to a lot of these people who are in the ministry of emotional healing, like me now, when you behave a certain way, I'll just ask you, what's your relationship with your father like? Because that's the go-to. Absent fathers, we think, okay, God will not, God will not have interest in you, you know? Or fathers that didn't give a damn about us, we say, God, no really, does God hear me? Or you want to talk to a pastor in church and usher say, no, you can't, no, 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 you can't talk, but see another guy, maybe rich or influential, you know, first class access. And you begin to say, okay, maybe God doesn't want, because you feel God speaks through these people. So that's, that's the number one thing. Please call him daddy. Call him guy. Call him, if you want to call him sir, fine. He is not like your earthly father. He is not like any human being. Don't, don't. 
feel free. He's not tired of hearing you. He's actually waiting for you to realize his love for you, to realize who you are. Then we can now start our journey. It took Moses 40 years, 40 years for Egypt to be removed, for him to realize Oh, come to the end of himself that, okay, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to be a deliverer. It took 40 years. It took Joseph about 13 years. It will take you, those 23 years, maybe God was waiting for you to realize something. So I'm not like your earthly father. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. He says, oh, what peace we often forfeit. You know, see, your, your, I, love, I love your question. You already answered it. The father is not like any human being. He loves you dearly. He is, he is, let me not say crazy about you, but he loves you with such an intense love. So please, he is not like man. That's the first step. Hmm? Then continue talking to him. He is not tired. He's waiting for you. And I pray that through this response, you will get ready to be ready for him to take you out of that thing. And please, let me say this to everyone. Sometimes we get our sense of worth from what we do. Our performance. Now death be that. That's death. You will die because when you perform and people are hailing you, you will be alive. Then tomorrow, somebody else comes and they take their attention, turn their, and they are not looking at you like before. You come down. That's death. Death is this. That's death. But when you attach your sense of worth, you get, you get it from, sorry, you get it from what God has said about you, from who you are in Christ. When you are walking, you'll be walking as someone, you don't care. You are not doing it for, for any, any sense of, uh, you know, you're not, you're not getting your self-esteem from there. You already know who you are. You get it. So don't seek validation from what you do. Seek validation or get your validation from who you are, that God has made you, and then use that sense of validation to do whatever you are. Like we said before, being is what God is about. Becoming, not doing. He can do anything by himself. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, so, we would like to take about one, maybe just one question from the audience. If you have a question you want to ask, please just move to that side where the lady in pink is standing and we would be able to take one question from the audience. While that is going on, um, we'll take one last question here. Okay, <laughs> said so I should ask you. What do you think about therapy? And what's, what is your recommended Christian therapy? How do you start the process of emotional healing if you'd like to unburden and trace back certain events to know yourself better? What is my personal opinion about therapy? I don't see anything wrong with it. However, um, what's the other part? What's, what's recommended my opinion? What's my recommended? Christian therapy. First, start in the word of God. Start by speaking to Jesus and waiting to hear him. You see, we've been taught that prayer is communication. Com have you heard this? Person? Talking to God. Mm -hmm. As I'm talking, I ain't not listening. So, would you say it's a complete process if there's no listening happening? Okay. So, prayer is intimate conversations with your father. It is talking to God and having him talk back to you. Until that communion happens, it is not complete. And that is where we get hiccups. Because when he speaks back to you, the Bible says, um, there's a portion of scripture that says, his voice thunders upon many waters, but yet he has a still small voice. God's voice is able to give you direction, is able to, is able to give you comfort, 
is able to heal your deepest scars, is able to cover you, to redefine you. In fact, I was sharing this with Minister Nusa earlier. Recently, forgive me, please. I know this is not exactly part of the question, but very recently, a few days ago, I was just about to go to bed and I heard a, a line, just a phrase, a sentence, that um, this was how, it's on my phone, that revival, um, yes, revi revival, you know, we're in the days of revival, you know, and revival comes with, a, with an, ex an encounter or a series of encounters. And revival also comes with healing. And the Holy Spirit is responsible for that. And he led me to Genesis 1 verse 2. If you read that scripture, it says that the Spirit of God hovered. In some translations, it says he moved over the waters. And the, the root word there, like we were sharing, is, I don't remember, there is rafak, if I pronounce it right. But it's similar to when a hen sits over an egg. So that's what God is doing. He can incubate you. <laughs> he can sit over you and nurture you. Right? It takes, sorry, I need to pull out my phone because I wrote it down. It takes, um, excuse me, please. Sorry. I have children. My phone is passworded. It's <laughs> my own safety. Right, okay. So it takes, yes, used in the context of a mother soothing a child or a chicken sitting over an egg to hatch. It takes time. Um, things that it, an egg needs to hatch, temperature, humidity, turning, and ventilation. So what is therapy? Ventilation. It is one element in the process. Because you can, if you've had therapy before, look, you can do it and it will yield no results. Anybody can testify? Anybody? Great. So do not, therapy is not the healer. God is the healer. Therapy can be a path. But I see that we've become so fixated with subcontracting our healing to sit down with someone and they will tell me what to do and I'll be healed. Mm -mm. Healing is your responsibility. You, the therapist only has the information you provide to provide you with what you need. God has the full picture. So therapy is ventilation. It can be for some other people. It can be journaling. A great way is worship. I'll be here worshiping even when it is not easy. <laughs> Here's my worship, all of my worship, and I will not be silent, and I will always worship you right there right there transformation is being is happening healing is happening so nothing wrong with therapy but let's not take an element and magnify it let's put it in that appropriate place there is turning there is humidity there is temperature how and, and you see Mr. Nusa has given us a feast <laughs> in wisdom What's the temperature of your prayer? How, how intimate, how warm? You see, if I get up from this chair, it will be warm because I've been sat here for a while. How's your prayer life? How's your communion with God? Is it cold or is it warm? Is it intimate? You know, there are friends you see and you give them side hugs, and there are friends you see that you throw the weight of your being on them. How is your place of intimacy with God? There are times when, see, I, by nature, I have bad mouth. I'm, I'm honest enough to know that Jesus is changing me. In fact, we have come a long way. There are times when I open my mouth to speak, and I know my daddy won't be happy. In fact, there are times when God has... Yes, sir. So you are saying something. It's okay. That's not my real answer. Because alone, if I open my mouth... But is it a therapist that is going to tell me that? No. I'm changed by interacting with my father to his perfect image, not to the version that is socially acceptable. But God makes me fit for his purpose by spending time there. No other agency on earth or in heaven has 
power to heal like the word of God. Nothing else. It is the force that created. Look, when the Bible says in, verse, in Genesis 1-2, the Bible says that the spirit of the Lord hovered and moved over the earth. In, the third, in verse 3, it says, and the Lord said, there is, when God hovers over you, look, you will hear. Words will be spoken. God will give you a new name. I know it, and I know it. I know it as I know my name. There are things God will say to you. There are dimensions of revelation in God that will unearth versions of yourself you didn't know were possible. There are things that you think you cannot do, and the Lord will wake you up. For example, Flourish talked about her God experience when, when that scripture came alive. Now imagine saying, God, you know, you have an opportunity to speak or to encourage someone, and you're wondering, what will I hear, say? And you hear the Lord say, Isaiah 50 to you, I have given you the tongue of the learned. I, look, you will open your mouth with confidence because you know that it's not your wisdom coming out. No, therapy cannot provide you with that. That's my Ther answer. Therapy is, to therapy is like ventilation. It's, it's, it helps you come to what she said at the beginning, which is be true to yourself. I always say, the day madman well, now the day where he looks, say, ah, I don't suppose they like this. <laughs> so if you are not true to yourself, um, the journey can't start. Now, when we talk about the word of God, it can't be sweet to you if it doesn't mean anything. It can't help you if you don't take it as important as it should be. Because sometimes we want the people that hurt us to be the people that will say, I'm sorry, then we'll be okay. It won't, it won't help you. You want closure from, oh, that boyfriend that broke your heart, for him to say, oh, I'm sorry. Um, you know, but if you were injured from that, thing, you will not be healed. You know, it won't take away the years that were lost because of the pain you went through. But the word of God, the word of God will generate, can create a new life out of nothing for you. Um, so this is what I do. I see myself like someone who is crawling. I can't get up to run. I used to describe myself too as, um, you know, when Lazarus came out of the grave, he still had grave clothes on. You know, he was alive, but he was bound. So I used to crawl like that person that for 23 years, I used to, it was like nothing was happening. I used to crawl. I used to be slow till some years ago. And you need to hear, lose him and let him. You need those things broken off. So this is my, I Google the scriptures for the thing I'm feeling. And then I enter. But you know, not be ordinary mouth, you go take talk that scripture. Stay on it. They worship, day on that place. I don't day on Ephesians 1, chapter 1, 1 to 3 for weeks. It was just that he has blessed me with every spirit until the thing jumps at you and then it becomes more real. So your eye, you know, go you they're not they use clear eye, they, 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 they declare the word, you know. So please, even if you have to crawl, get there to the point where the word of God is what defines your life, everything. So therapy helps you to be vulnerable, to say, okay, yes, uh, this is my problem. But the solution, the word of God, that's the therapy. Sorry, I'm going to add one sentence. You know, I don't know. There's a scripture that says, um, thy word did I find, and I did eat them. I looked at it last week. Jeremiah. Yes. Thy words did I find, and I did eat them. Let's leave it there. That's it. Thank you. What can I say? <laughs> Okay, so we'll just take one question from the audience. Someone is ready to ask a question. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for this because um, this is something that I've always wanted. I think just like almost everyone in the audience, I'm always like, in the church, we talk about God being so many things, but not just our emotional side, right? And I was just telling them right now that from everything that was just spoken down, you guys have answered to so many questions. And I was going to ask... About... Sorry, your name. Oh, so sorry. My name is Thelma. Okay. 
So I was going to ask about surrendering and letting your defense down, like uh, Musa said, because it's one thing to know that you're hurting. It's one thing to know that you have walls and you can feel the walls. It's another thing to know that you have not surrendered, but it's so foreign and very difficult. In fact, sometimes it feels impossible to just surrender. And everybody tells you surrender all the way, but it's not just happening. Like it's something that I've been on a journey on, on. And sometimes I feel like I have, and then it's like I'm not even making progress. Right. And just when I was standing, God reminded me of what he said when he said it takes time, it's a journey. Um, and I just wanted to know like practical steps, right? Because I actually stay in the word. I have seen the beauty of worshiping, I've seen the beauty of focusing on God and magnifying him way beyond those things. But a lot of times I hear people call God Father. I call him father too, but I don't think I really, <laughs> I don't really think I've accepted him as father. I, I call him friend, but I don't really think I see him as my friend because there are certain things that I still see myself showing up for myself. I don't know how to let God help me. I don't know how to let God carry me. I don't know how to relax. I'm the type of person that would, when God says, do this, I'll be like, God, don't worry, I'll handle it. I see myself wanting to impress God. I see myself wanting to be, be a good child because it's in being good, I get some form of reward. But it's almost like God is saying, you don't have to do anything. But I feel like I don't even know. I don't want to go. When stuff happens, I just see myself running. I, it's evil. Like, I'm just going. It's programmed in me. And I'm like, why do I keep doing this? I don't know where to start because I'm aware. It's awareness. I'm aware. I'm aware that I need to heal. I've always wanted to heal. It's something I've cried to God about. I'm like, God, you always, you always healing cancer. Everything is. How do you heal me from hurt? How do you heal me from trauma? How do you heal me from anxiety? How do you heal people? Because it's not just me. I see people even in church, pastors, people that are carrying certain qualities that have been, been through their parents from generations and nobody is talking about it. People are worship leaders, pastors, they go home, they have anger issues. Like, it's everywhere. And I'm like, we are actually literally suffering. I'm like, at a point I was like, God, is it that you want me to just be saved and while I go through this earth, I will just suffer emotionally. And then, I, I don't know, it it's a lot of things. So it's easy to say it, but in terms of practices, like there is all meditate on the word of God, but I don't know how to meditate. Okay, nice to meet you, Telma. All right. Well, huh? <laughs> please have a seat. Thank you for your question. Now, I'm going to be as Honest, because your question has two parts. There's the surrender element, and there's how you perceive God element. Let's start with surrender. Tell me, please hold on. Um, you're a brilliant young lady, and so you believe you know the best course for your life. That's why you're struggling. See, um, do you know how to operate this sound instrument? Any of this stuff? Sorry? Okay. Tell me one thing you're completely clueless about. Sorry? Great. Flying an airplane. If you were put in one, what would you do? Then what? No, you are inside one. See, this is it. You think you have a solution. You believe that God gave you a brain to figure it out. Yeah? Yeah? God made you intelligent for you because you should make your decisions. Yeah? Yes, I'm on student. Yeah? Yeah? No, come on, speak to me. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. But the issues of your life, your brain are too small. It's too small to handle it. 
Let me break that down. You do not know the best course for your life. <laughs> you do not. You cannot. Your brain, mortal, created, cannot comprehend things that be not as though they were. So you can only live, flourish, and thrive based on God's leading. You will make, you believe you know what to do because you've probably made a couple of decisions that turned out right. So you have a sense of accomplishment in your decision making. They turned out good, but you don't even know if they were the best course of action because you cannot see tomorrow. You cannot see beyond your decision making. So let's score you nine over 10. Seems great, but if I told you you had the potential to have a hundred over 10, would you desire it? Mm -hmm. Surrender. Go to God. You want to make money decisions. You've researched the financial um, principles. You Perhaps maybe you even have a, a degree in finance. You've done your groundwork. Wait. You want to surrender? Start by waiting. I know, I believe I know what I should do. I will not do till you tell me. Sit down there. Uh, your body, your soul, and your spirit is shaking like this. <laughs> Because you know what to do. But that is surrender. I prioritize. I extol you above time, above logic, above self. So I will wait. That is the hard part. Because if I have where I want to put my money, and they tell me that I'm going to get returns in six weeks. And they say I should do it tomorrow. We wake up at five. We do it kia, kia, so that you can get it. But did you hear the Lord say go? Not yet. I'll tell you something else. You see, the Israelites wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. But you know that that journey was not supposed to be 40 years. No. Wandering. Hmm? It's not a proof of his presence. <laughs> You can labor for nothing, and it's painful. You can make mistakes. Uh, we say we grew up here and experience is the best teacher. It's raw. Mm. It's a lie. It's a painful teacher. You can leverage wisdom for your life just by being carried. Mm. So you want to surrender. Wait. You want to surrender. Do nothing. You want to surrender. Look, there are dimensions to this thing. There is literally saying, God, I know what I want to do. I want to go to school. Is this time? If a, a child will honor their father, yes or no? Yes. Now, what is honor? If he's your father, where is his honor? If you will not wait for his opinion. If you will not wait for his counsel. If you will not, I know that this is not related to your question, but let me just say this. If you will not, if you will not dress to please him, and you surrendered. See, I don't expose my body, but it got to a point that God said to me, if I'm showing up top to bottom, I'm covered. No cleavage, nothing. There are dimensions to it. He's interested in how I dress. I'm surrendered. I'm dead. The life I live, it is not I. It is Christ who lives in me. That there is surrender. Look, Paul was not, the guy was brilliant. This guy wrote letters. This guy was, he was Saul before he became Paul. But if you look at the last, um, I believe it's the last chapter in Acts, and you look at Romans, this guy went from being a lawyer to describing himself as a bond servant, not just servant. English is such a lo lovely language. A bond servant. Are you sold out to Jesus? Now, we see that word surrender. We throw it around. But that's what it is. It means to die. Laid out as an offering. As you are right now, right here, he tells you to lie down with your cream. Fine girl like you, fresh, no pimples. Oh, no body sex. <laughs> eh? You roll on the floor. But if he tells you tomorrow to quit your job, 
No, I'm not putting you on the spot. Do you understand? I'm trying to explain to you that surrender is a process. It is, it is gradual and it grows and it's out of love and honor, not duty. Yeah. And I think that is where a lot of times, you see this surrender, 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 because somebody said you should surrender. No, I surrender because I honor him. I'm sorry, I know I've taken time. The other bit as to you want to call God Father. As you surrender, you will know him better. You won't struggle. Look, you knew your husband for six years before you got married. Yeah? There are things that nobody has tell you about him. Right? You spent time with him. In fact, the version of him you know there are parts of him that even his siblings who he grew up with don't even know. That's exactly what it is. As you spend time with him, you will know him. You will not struggle to call him father. You will not struggle to call him friend. You will not struggle to say he's the lover of your soul because you've spent time. You've been changed. You enjoy his presence. There's a sweet fellowship, not just fellowship. The Bible is so sweet. Sorry. There's the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. That is what surrender is. Take, take down all the images in your head that you associate with God. Take down all the voices in your ears that you associate with the voice of God. Because most times what stops our surrender or what hinders what the head? process is you know, the, the people that you want to impress. It, you, you can't only want to impress God and then it's a struggle. There are other what if, you know, ah, if I do this, what will this person say? Most of the time, that's what makes it difficult for us to surrender. If I know that if I do this, there are many times I know that, ah, I'm supposed to take this step, but God, if I take it, won't I look like, I've gone somewhere to minister and they, they mentioned something that concerned me. I was struggling. The Holy Spirit said, go and meet that person, let him lay hands on you. Ah, but this person is my colleague. The Holy Spirit said, oh yeah, as I was coming, the man laid hands on me. Somebody saw it and prophesied one prophecy that I think led to um, a song that I, I, I released. That, you know, so it's people, you know. Yeah, you want to lie down, but you're looking at, you want to surrender, lie down. You're looking at, ah, grass, they here, stone, they here. You know, so please take those voices away from your head. Take those images when you think about it. Um, Yes, we pick up the words father, friend, lover, because it's in our songs in church. So religion plays a very good role where we say it, but we don't understand it. I remember I was preaching one day in Benin inside the bus. I said, Jesus loves you. you no, I, I, was, I, I don't they preach Jesus loves you normal. One day I was inside the bus. The Holy Spirit told me Jesus loves you. I said, yes, I know. And he said, no, you don't know. He told me Jesus loves you. And he don't know. I've been preaching it, but we never really enter. So... There's, and then finally, God taught Abraham how to surrender to him. He took him through a 74-year class. Um, I mean, a 24-year class. He didn't have faith for Isaac even when he came to... You know, many people say he had faith for 25 years. No. He, he knew... He, he, yes, yes. He had faith for being father of many nations, but he didn't understand Isaac, the Isaac dimension. So much so that in Genesis 17, when God appeared to him and said, um, turn your wife's name from Sarai to Sarah and yours from Abraham to Abraham, he laughed in verse 17 of chapter 7. And said, how can I, my body dead and my wife's body dead, 90, uh, 190 give birth? He laughed. And he now said, what of Ishmael? Consider Ishmael. And God said, no, that's not what I'm doing. Why? God was preparing him for that sacrifice in Genesis 22, where he would say, bring your son, your only son. Now, why was it easy after Abraham had passed the test for him to surrender Isaac? He saw that God is able to bring life from dead, death. God had taught him, I'm able to bring you and Isaac from your dead body and your wife's dead body. So I'm able to raise this child again. From So when, now that I said, bring him, he went. Yes, he don't go to school. Uh -huh. So that's what God does for you. He doesn't just demand surrender without teaching you and, you know, training you for it. So he, he will build your trust in him for you to be able to. So you can go to God and ask him to teach you 
how to surrender. You don't need yeah. to try to figure it out. Surrender, surrender. How do I surrender? Yeah. You know, you can also go. Yes, fellowship. Okay. This has been an amazing session. Thank you so much.